Welcome. This video will introduce you to some of the essential copyright information you will need when publishing your work. We'll start off with a brief introduction before exploring copyright considerations surrounding the publication of journal articles, including looking at some of the funder requirements. We'll then talk about monograph publishing and copyright before wrapping up with some common copyright questions. Copyright considerations should be taken into account throughout the preparation of your manuscript. This is because the publisher of your work will expect you to sort out all clearance for any third party material and give appropriate attributions to it. Third party material can include images, graphs, figures, etc. for which you do not own the copyright. Clearance is not usually needed for quotations due to fair dealing. However, if you are quoting a substantial part of the original text, you may need to seek copyright clearance. No matter which way you are publishing your work, there will be copyright considerations. Usually, creative works are protected by copyright automatically, but copyright ownership can change as the work goes through the publishing process. We are going to consider how copyright changes depending on the way in which you're publishing your work. When you are publishing in a subscription-based journal, it is likely that you will sign the copyright over to the publisher. This is usually agreed through the copyright agreement you sign prior to publication. In some instances, it may be that you instead give the publisher a license to publish, but this is less common for subscription-based publishing. Always read your copyright agreement and make sure that you are happy with the arrangements before signing. When you publish your work in a subscription-based journal, usually you keep the copyright to the Author Accepted Manuscript, or AAM. This is the version of the paper after peer review, but before any changes such as formatting have been added by the publishing journal. It's important to be aware that, whilst you may retain the copyright for the AAM, many journal policies place restrictions on what you are allowed to do with its contents. For example, it is common for the journal to stipulate that you can only deposit the full text of your manuscript in a repository after an embargo period. That means that the full text cannot be made available elsewhere for a certain amount of time after the publication in the journal. Sherpa Romeo is a good tool to help you find information on specific journals policies. Despite this potential minefield, it's important to remember that some journals will allow you to request a change to your copyright agreement. In some cases, these changes could allow you to keep all of the rights to your document. This kind of situation is becoming more common thanks to funder requirements, which we will talk about shortly. So we've talked about publishing in a subscription journal. Now let's look at publishing in an open access journal. When publishing in an open access journal, the author keeps all rights to their work. This includes the final published version. The journal then gets a license to publish the work. When publishing your work in an open access journal, you choose which license you want to assign to your work. It's important to note that once chosen, you cannot change the license you have assigned, although you can allow exceptions. You can see here the different elements of Creative Commons or CC licenses. These elements can be combined in a variety of ways to get the final Creative Commons license. The BY element is known as attribution and allows for reuse of work as long as the author or licensor gets credit. The SA element, which stands for share alike, means modified versions of the work can be distributed, but only under the same or not more restrictive license as the original work. The NC element, which stands for non-commercial, means reuse is only allowed for non-commercial purposes, so no one can make money from reusing the work. The ND element, which stands for no derivatives, means reuse is allowed but no modifications to the original work are permitted. If you're funded, you might be restricted as to which license you can use. Funders often ask for a CC BY license, so a simple attribution license. Although in humanities, CC BY ND, so attribution and no derivatives, is more common. As the name suggests, hybrid journals are a mix of publishing in a subscription-based journal and an open access one. Publishing in a hybrid journal means that whilst the journal operates as a subscription-based journal overall, there is the option for authors to pay to make their article available open access. Like with publishing in an open access journal, if you pay to make your work open access in a hybrid journal, you retain the rights for the paper and attach a CC license to the work. If you publish traditionally in a hybrid journal, the copyright is usually transferred to the publisher, like with a subscription-based journal. If you are publishing a journal article that acknowledges research funding, you will likely have requirements from your funder that you would need to follow. Coalition S is a consortium of research funders 
that includes UKRI, the EU Commission and Wellcome. Coalition S funders all require open access publication. This is because of Plan S, the set of principles devised by Coalition S that requires full and immediate access to all Coalition S funded research. In order to comply with Plan S, if your research is funded by a Coalition S funder, you must follow one of the following routes when publishing your work. The first is to publish in a compliant gold or diamond open access journal. If the journal requires an article processing charge payment, your funder should pay this. The second is to publish in the hybrid open access journal, but only if this journal is covered by one of our read and publish agreements. These agreements are signed between the university and the publishers, and they mean that payment to the publisher covers both our access to their subscription content and the article processing charges for Essex authors to publish open access. The third option is to follow the green route to open access, where the full text of your paper is deposited in our institutional repository. However, there must be a zero month embargo period as Plan S requires immediate open access. This has implications for copyright if there is a mismatch between the journal's policy and the funder's policy. If you are relying on the green route and there is a mismatch between the journal and your funder's policies, you will need to use the rights retention strategy to ensure that you can deposit the full text of your work with a zero month embargo period. The rights retention strategy statement is a statement to add to your paper on submission to the journal that informs the journal you will be retaining the copyright on the author's accepted manuscript version of your work. The wording for this is shown here. In order to retain the rights to your work, you must place a prior license on your AAM. The crucial point is that the license must be assigned on submission as it must be a prior license. It cannot be added after submission. This prior license is usually a CC BY license, but in some cases it may be a CC BY ND by exception. While this approach is a way to comply with funder requirements, even if your research isn't funded, it is good practice to use the rights retention strategy wording on submission to a journal so you retain the rights over your AAM. This enables you to reuse that version how you like, including depositing the full text without an embargo period. From the 1st of April 2022, all peer-reviewed research articles submitted for publication that acknowledge UKRI funding must be made immediately available open access. If your research is funded by UKRI, therefore, you must follow one of the three routes previously discussed. It is crucial to be aware of funder requirements before submitting to a journal in case you need to rely on the rights retention strategy. If you have any questions about this at all, please do get in touch with the library. When publishing a book or a book chapter, the publisher will ask the author to assign certain rights. Copyright agreements when publishing in books vary a lot from publisher to publisher, so it is important to read the copyright agreement in full. In general, there are three different options. If you assign the copyright to the publisher, the publisher now owns the work. However, the author usually agrees rates for royalties. If you give the publisher exclusive rights to publish, you as the author usually keep the copyright, but you are not allowed to publish or disseminate the work elsewhere. If you give the publisher non-exclusive rights, you are usually allowed to disseminate the work, but usually you cannot republish. When publishing an open access monograph, the same concepts apply as when publishing in open access journals. The author retains the rights and gives a license to the book publisher to publish. The author assigns a CC license to the work. Currently, open access monograph publishing is behind open access journal article publishing. However, the new UKRI open access policy will include monographs from the 1st of January 2024. After this date, all UKRI funded monographs and edited collections will need to be made available open access. More guidance will be given around this closer to the time and is likely that the next ref will include more policies about open access monographs. We are investigating institutionally how we can support this change and we'll be giving updates as and when we can. Copyright is not always straightforward, so let's go through some of the questions about copyright and publishing we get asked the most. Firstly, do I own the rights to my PhD? Yes, as a student at the university, you own the rights to your PhD. This means you are the copyright holder and can decide how it is reused. 
Can I use images I don't own in my research? Yes, there is a copyright exemption for education and research that means you can use a reasonable amount of third party publications within research. An image would usually be deemed a reasonable amount, although you might want to consider using a low resolution image. Remember to always properly cite the source. Can I include the images I used in my research in my publication? It depends. This is because publication is different from research. Once you publish your PhD, you must think about any third party copyright materials you have used. Open access images are usually a good idea, but remember to check the CC license conditions. If the images are not open access, you will need to seek permission from the copyright holder. Can I reuse content from work I have published before? Again, it depends. Do you still own the copyright? If you have published the work previously in a subscription based journal, you may have signed the copyright over to the publisher. You may have also given the publisher an exclusive license to publish. If you retained the copyright, it shouldn't be a problem. Always make sure to self cite where needed, as giving yourself credit is important too. Can I reuse figures from my published work in my future work? This also depends on if you still own the copyright to the figures. A good way to ensure you do is to deposit any figures you create for your publications within Figshare before you publish the final paper. Doing so enables you to retain copyright on the figures themselves and place your preferred license on these figures. Do I need to use the rights retention strategy statement? This will depend on if you have funder requirements that stipulate that you must make your work open access on publication. If you do, you will need to use the rights retention strategy statement on submission to the journal if you are not publishing in a fully gold or diamond open access journal or in a hybrid journal covered by a read and publish agreement. However, remember that you can use this strategy to retain the rights on your work regardless of funder policy. It is not only used for compliance. Thank you for watching this video on copyright and publishing. If you have any follow up questions or feedback, please do get in touch via resup at essex.ac.uk.